Well, the Occupy Victoria campout is here to stay after earning the stamp of approval from City Council late last night, but the spirit of cooperation between the protesters and the politicians will be tested as early as next week. And if those tents are still in Centennial Square into November, voters may be the ones who decide if the Occupy camp stays or goes. CTV's Andrew Johnson has been following the developments, and he joins us now live with more. Andrew. Hudson, just like in Vancouver, the Occupy movement has now become an election issue in the capital. A mayoral candidate is calling for the protest to end now. It's raining on Occupy Victoria, but the movement is now safely under the protective umbrella of City Hall. I can't tell you the amount of emails and uh, phone calls to support that I've gotten this morning over yesterday's council motion. Be it so moved that the City of Victoria supports the People's Assembly of Victoria. Councillor Philippe Lucas introduced the motion that was passed last night to give the nonviolent assembly the all clear indefinitely as long as it remains peaceful. But today the mayor makes it clear he's assessing the protest and where where it's headed day by day. Ultimately talking to the occupiers saying, what is your end date? What is your goal? What are, what, are, what are you looking for and what does that look like? For mayoral candidate Paul Brown, Occupy Victoria's end date is now. He says he supports the global movement, but not an endless campout. I don't like what I see. I think we need to send a strong message that this needs to come to an end. I want to be able to bring the kids down here, Andrew. And from what I've seen, um, the smell I, ha I can take in the air and such forth. It's not where I want to bring the kids to. If the mayor and council are concerned Occupy Victoria might just end up dividing votes in someone else's favor, they aren't letting on. But a couple of exchanges between Fortin and Philippe Lucas during last night's vote were confrontational. Here's one of them. Actually, I think I get to speak to the original motion first. I'm actually trying to keep it short. You're going to speak to it. She's yep. going to amend to it. You might argue. Can we yep. at least hear the no, amendment I'd, I'd first? Like to, I'd like to speak to it first, please. You don't want to hear the amendment? I'll hear the amendment after I've spoken to it. I, I think that um, we're all under a lot of pressure right now with the election coming up, and uh, um, it was certainly late at night. Fortin, meantime, is looking ahead to next Tuesday when Christmas is scheduled to arrive in Centennial. The first big test is going to come next week. We're going to need to go in um, and put up the Christmas flights. Protesters have agreed to cooperate. Three weeks after that, they'll be asked to slide over to accommodate an outdoor skating rink. Hudson, both the politicians and the prote protesters acknowledge the existence of Occupy Victoria may play quite a role come election time in November. Does that cheapen the movement? Not so, says Philippe Lucas, who says if it's engaging more people in the process of voting, that's a good thing. Either way, you have to wonder if some of those up for re-election aren't secretly wishing right now this protest could have popped up some other time. Absolutely. Andrew, thank you. You're welcome.